I'll be the greatest jobs president that God ever created. I'll take them back from China, from Japan, from Mexico. Ford is building a two and a half billion dollar factory car plant, manufacturing plant for cars, trucks and parts in Mexico. How do you keep them? You put a, a penalty on, a tariff or whatever you call it. And believe me, China's doing it to us. China dumps all their stuff with us. And I'm not complaining about that, but you, I have friends that are manufacturers. They cannot get their product into China. So if they're going to do it to us, we have to do it to them. And they'll say, but then my car is going to cost more for your people. No, you know what? They're going to make cars here. And maybe a person will buy fewer cars over the course of a lifetime. Who cares? If you look at what countries like China are doing to this country, they are eating our lunch. We're building China. We are really building China because everything we make is made in China or other countries. It's not made here. We don't make things anymore. We don't make, as an example, I ordered thousands of windows the other week, a couple of weeks ago. They're made in China. I said, does anybody make windows like in this country, in North Carolina, in Alabama, in Oregon, in places that used to make windows? They don't make them anymore. We're building China by ordering all of their products. One of the things that baffles me is the extent to which people regard the trade deficit as a, as a bad thing. Let's go back. The Japanese have a very large trade deficit. They have a surplus, in, from their point of view, a deficit from our, what is it, 50 billion? I mean, now, what have they been doing with that 50 billion dollars over the last 10 years? Giving it to us. They've been making Americans rich. They've been buying golf courses at inflated prices. <coughs> They've been buying uh, property at inflated prices. Almost every one of their investments has gone sour. How have we been hurt by that? When I look at legal legislation, it almost always seems to me that legislation is enacted to benefit a small group at the expense of a large group. Free trade is a way of benefiting a large group at the expense of a small group. But politically, a small group always speaks with a bigger voice. If you were to take a referendum in this country, take a free trade issue, take any free trade issue you want. Suppose at the time one of my heroes, Mr. Reagan, made the great mistake of going along with voluntary import quotas on Japanese cars. <coughs> Suppose you had had a referendum of all automobile users in the United States, which said, are you willing to pay $2,000 extra a car in order to retain a few extra jobs in, in, uh, Detroit, in Michigan uh, in the automobile industry? Do you really think you would have gotten an overwhelming vote in favor of that? When was the last time anybody saw us beating, let's say, China in a trade deal? They kill us. I beat China all the time. All the time. When did we beat Japan at anything? They send their cars over by the millions. And what do we do? When was the last time you saw a Chevrolet in Tokyo? It doesn't exist, folks. If we have more free trade, we benefit. Look, well, are you worse off to the because extent that Japan is more productive? On the contrary. If Japan is more productive, they have goods and services that you can buy from them at better prices. And they have more money and more resources to buy goods and services from us or to invest in our country. At least they got our dollars they got to do something with. They got to do something. What are they going to do with the dollars? We have a huge trade imbalance with many countries. But if you use China as an example, they're eating our lunch. When people talk about free trade, like you just say, oh, that's tariff, that's... Well, I don't mind a tariff on a country that's got billions and billions of dollars of surplus. We are rebuilding China. We're rebuilding China because we order so much. We're so big. We're ordering so much product from them. The key, the reason why people are so mixed up, in my opinion, about free trade, uh, there are two reasons. One is the propaganda from the producers. But the other is that they don't recognize the role of a floating exchange rate. As, a, as something, suppose for a moment, uh, in the vision that people give, that everything in Japan was cheaper than everything in the United States. Okay? 
And so we want to buy all of Japan. They're willing to sell us. And they get dollars. But they don't want to buy anything in the United States because we're all too expensive. What are they going to do with those dollars? They're going to try to buy yen. How can they buy yen? Only by offering a better price for yen. But as they offer a better price for yen, the Japanese goods get more expensive and the U.S. goods get less expensive. You can't compare costs between countries. The costs here are in dollars, the costs there are in yen. And which is cheaper depends on what the exchange rate is. And the exchange rate balances in su uh, moves in such a way as to uh, uh, make sure that everybody who wants to get dollars can get them, everybody who wants to get yens can get them. You would impose tariffs on some products like 35% uh, on Ford cars made in Mexico. The Wall Street Journal says that you are running as, quote, the most anti-trade candidate since Herbert Hoover. Okay, so here's the story. First of all, the Wall Street Journal was bought for $5 billion. It's now worth $500 million, okay? They don't have to tell me what to do. The U.S has become a dumping ground for everybody else's problems. The reason why Japan has had a balance of payment surplus has nothing to do with all the nonsense you hear about dumping and all the rest. It has to do with the fact that they've been saving a larger fraction of their income than we have. And they have to do something with their savings. And the opportunities for investing it at home are limited. And so the investments in the United States are more attractive to them I assure you that if we were to, if our rate of saving would get to be higher than theirs, we'd have the surplus and they'd have, a, they'd have the deficit. In my opinion, you tax China. China is taking advantage of this country unbelievably. Now, I say you put a 25% tax on everything that's made in China. That's a tariff. That Absolutely. creates, and you know a, that what? creates and then a, the free, a trade war. That's right. And you know what? I'd love to have a... How are they going to retaliate? Well, you know how much loans, you know how much money we owe China right One now? One year of this tax and we don't owe them anything. One year of this tax and we don't owe them anything. Well, you know, I want to tell you the best argument I've ever heard for free trade. And this comes from Henry George. Henry George was a was a single taxer who wrote Progress and Poverty, the great book, a bestseller of the 1890s. He wrote once, it's a very interesting thing, in time of war, we blockade our enemies in order to prevent them from getting goods from us. In time of peace, we do to ourselves by tariffs what we do to our enemy in time of war. <laughs> Isn't that a marvelous way of putting it?